Hello, welcome to my channel, The Hebrew Bible. This is Moses Gumadi. And uh, in this episode, let us talk about the name above all names, the phrase taken from the New Testament. And my subject in this video is the divine name in the New Testament. Divine name in the New Testament. So I have five sections to this video. Overview of the divine name very quickly. Uh, there are other videos, obviously, within this channel, which uh, expand on the divine name a lot. But just in case, if you happen to visit this channel first time or viewing my videos first time, maybe you can just quickly look at this overview of the divine name. The second uh, is the divine name mentioned in the New Testament. The third is divine name was given to Yeshua, Jesus. Uh, fourth, importance of the divine name in the New Testament. And finally, calling upon the name of Yehovah. Yehovah. Okay, so let's begin with the overview of the divine name. These are the four letters of the divine name. Yehovah. Four letter divine name, also called Tetragrammaton, which is the most holiest name of God. It's a personal name of God. In English, we can say YHVH or YHWH, depending upon how you pronounce the third letter. Vav, Hebrew is read from the right to the left. And this name occurs 6,828 times precisely in the Hebrew Bible, according to the Leningrad Codex. Okay. Now, what it also means is that on an average, one in four verses has the divine name at least once, if not more. Okay, It is very frequent, not only 6,828 times, but throughout the scriptures, once in every four verses on an average, it's mentioned. And the first mention of the divine name is in Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. After the creation is over, after the seventh day is over, you know, he explains like this. These are the generations or these are the offspring or of heavens and of the earth when they were created in the day that Yehovah Elohim made the earth and the heavens. OK, so that's the name here. Adonai Elohim. I would be saying sometimes the name is pronounced also as Adonai in respect to God. You can say Adonai, which means Lord, or you can say Yehovah. Some people call Yahweh. Pronunciation is not so much an important thing, although it is important. But really what matters is the meaning and what do we mean by the word when we say the word. OK, that is more important. Uh, and the character of God underlying the name is more important. Now, it is vocalized in different ways. It is vocalized as Yehovah 52 times in the Leningrad Codex, whereas it is vocalized as Yehovah 6,470 times. Also, it is vocalized as Yehovi 33 times. Now, there is uh, within these, there are maybe other exceptions where instead of the Shwa here, you may have Khataf Segol, okay, also here in the bottom, so which I have not shown, but it is vocalized as Yehovi 33 times and Yehovi as 273 times. Interestingly, these two, Yehvi and Yah Yehwa and Yehvi both occur in Rig Veda, uh, but that's a topic which is outside the subject. It could be also pronounced, oh, by the way, these are the only four pronunciations mentioned in the Leningrad Codex. Now, there is an argument, obviously, most of the scholars, pro probably every scholar would say that these vowels, which give the uh, vocalization or the pronunciation of the names, are meant for pronouncing it as Adonai on the left-hand side. When it says Yehovah, actually you have to pronounce Adonai. And when it says Yehovi, you have to pronounce it as Elohim. That is why these vowels are given is a scholarly argument. And there is there are some merits to that. But there are also counter arguments, valid counter arguments to that. And we are not going into that subject today. There are alternative pronunciations also given. For example, Yeho and Yahoo. 
And these two are present within the theophoric names. When we say theophoric names, we're talking about Yehoshua, Yehonadab, Yehonathan, uh, you know, Yehoiakim, Yehoiakim, all these names. Or Netanyahu, Yeshayahu, Yirmiyahu, Ezekiahu, etc. This Yahu or Yeho are pretty much present in all the uh, you know, theophoric names in the Hebrew Bible. Uh, and, um, and therefore, what, so what some people would do is they would make the last letter H, the, the H letter silent, and it is quite possible. could be taken as matris lectionis or something. You know, basically, it could be taken as a vowel, which is a valid uh, Hebrew uh, way of the grammatical rule, in which case it becomes Yeho and that becomes Yahu. Also, the scholarly suggestion is Yahweh uh, or Yahweh, depending upon how you pronounce the letter Vav. And there is another uh, variation called Yahu He, which uh, apparently is taken from a Samaritan uh, high priest's son, uh, who he, he had written in Arabic uh, and given to somebody, I think one of the Western scholars, and it was reported that he said the name is pronounced by the Samaritans as Yahu He. Well, we don't know about that, but I think that is certainly reported. It is there in uh, the literature or somewhere. You can Google it. Now, uh, Jews uh, say Adonai, which means Lord. And in the Greek, it is translated in the New Testament and also in the LXX as Kyrios. Although LXX is a Septuagint, uh, it has the Lord's name mentioned in the BC manuscripts, but in AD manuscripts, after Christ manuscripts, they have consistently made it into Kyrios, which means that I think they have probably changed uh, or they have written newer manuscripts with Kyrios, which means Lord. In Latin, Dominus, and English, Lord in all capitals. So whenever you see Lord in all capitals in your English Bible, that refers to the divine name. And this divine name obviously is given for, um, explained to Moses at the burning bush. Uh, and he says, this is my name forever. So that's the name by which God is to be referred. And this is my memorial unto all generations. It's not just to Israel. I mean, it is, it is a name forever. And the meaning of the name is really the key. You can look at the word uh, and through grammatical analysis can derive several meanings. So one, one of the meanings is he is. Another way you can look at is he will be. Also he causes to be. All these meanings are valid meanings from grammatical uh, analysis of the word. Uh, and they all are based upon the revelation given in the book of Exodus chapter 3 verse 14, the previous verse that we have seen. Because the Lord there, he said, Ehye, Asher, Ehye, this word, uh, Ehye, uh, in the form it occurs, in the grammatical form it occurs, based on that, and an analysis could be done, it could be interpreted as I am um, and I will be. It, this is in the first person. The Lord's name, he will be, is in the third third person. Okay, So in the first person, he said, eh yeah, asher, eh yeah. what it means is, I am what I am. I am what I will be. I will be what I am. I will be what I will be. Which means there is both being and becoming. Being and becoming. Transcendence and immanence. Both are present within the name. Eh yeah. Uh, can be uh, read as becoming. Uh, as we read in 2 Samuel, for example, I will be to him as father, he shall be to me as son. Ani ehye lo le'av vehu yihye li le'ben. So, ehye means I will be. So, it's, it's, it's a becoming aspect. Right. The second one uh, in the subject, obviously, now, we're done with the divine name. Very quick introduction. Uh, we want to, if you want to learn more about the divine name, I have a separate playlist in the, uh, in my YouTube channel. Please look at it, and there are several videos on the divine name, especially the name Yodhevauhe or Yehovah. So you can you can read about it. Available, you can watch them those videos. Now, uh, divine name is mentioned in the New Testament. Now, some people will be surprised uh, uh, of, of hearing that. So let's see whether it is mentioned in the New Testament or not. Now, the book of Revelation, chapter 19, 
uh, verse 1 and verse 6 is shown here on the screen. You can see the word Alleluia in English, which is actually Hebrew Alleluia, Hallelujah. So this word Yah is the two-letter name of God underlying this four-letter name. Okay. And in the very context, after saying Hallelujah, they say salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. And here the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. And in both these cases, if you look at the Greek, here it is Kyriototeo Emon, Kyrios Hoteos Ho Pantocrator. So these words based on their on the Septuagint, uh, how the Septuagint has translated the Hebrew based on that, we can easily identify what is the Hebrew underlying this and that turns out to be here, Yehovah Elohenu or Adonai Elohenu, our God. This is the Lord our God is Yehovah Elohenu and here Yehovah Elohet Oath, the Lord God of hosts. Okay, And so the Lord's name is very much present in the New Testament. Also in the book of Revelation verse, uh, chapter 1 and verse 4, as also in a couple of other locations within the same book, Revelation, we have this phrase, which is and which was and which is to come. Well, in the modern translations, it's translated who is, who was, who is to come, which is nothing but Haya Vehove Vehye. This is a phrase also used in some songs, Jewish songs, etc. Uh, what it really means is he is, he was, and he will be. Okay. So, Haya Vehove Veyehye. And so that refers to the name of God as well indirectly. Very, Although not directly mentioned, but that is what it is referring to and that's the meaning of the name. The NT further, the New Testament has more than 50 direct quotations of the Old Testament containing the divine name Yodhe Vauhe, translated into Greek as Kyrios or Lord. Now, uh, for example, let's take this one. Mark chapter 12, verse 29. Jesus answered him, the first of all, all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Now this is from Mark. And who is speaking? Jesus is speaking to somebody who, who asked, what is the greatest commandment or something like that. So the first of all, the commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. It is quoted directly from Deuteronomy, the book of Deuteronomy, Devarim, chapter 6, verse 4. Hear, O Israel, Yehovah Elohenu, Yehovah Echad, or the Lord our Elohim, um, Yehovah is one. And so the name is translated as the Lord. But it is a clear reference, and that's what I said in the previous case. We have fifty more than fifty direct quotations of the Old Testament in the uh, in the New Testament, right? With the divine name Yehovah translated as the Lord. Another another occasion is that the next verse, in fact, verse five, uh, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God, which is thou shalt love Yehovah thy Elohim with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy might. This would be in Hebrew where Ahafta et Adonai Elohecha. Bekol Levavka uva kol Navsheka uva kol Meodecha. Now, this is a very important, well, memorized verse by all Jews. They, uh, you know, they're observing uh, Jews. They read these things every day. And here we have the same thing. Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind. This occurs in Matthew 22, Mark 12, Luke 10. You see, Jesus is telling to love Yehovah your Elohim. Now, why am I mentioning these things is because, you know, there are a lot of videos in the YouTube and there are several of them um, who are putting out a greatest lie that Jesus and Paul were actually teaching that uh, the God of the Old Testament is not the Father, but uh, a higher God supposedly is the Father. That is what is supposed to be taught by Jesus and Paul is what they claim, which of course is a Gnostic teaching, the teaching of Marcion, uh, Valentinus and other guys. And this teaching is being repeated uh, by so-called Christians. They call themselves Christians. They want to go by the New Testament. They want to go by the teachings of Jesus, but they don't like him. 
you know because for them he's the god of the jews these are anti-semitic people forget about anti-semitism all right just look at the new testament jesus himself tells you that the lord our god the lord is one that refers to yehovah next thou shalt love the lord thy god that is okay there is no doubt whatsoever third another reference the lord said unto my lord sit thou at my right hand this is again a quotation from the lord jesus himself matthew 22 mark 12 luke 20 acts 2 uh, in four locations this uh, scripture is quoted from psalm 110 yehovah said unto my adon sit thou at my right hand and so the, the, this is another case fourthly uh, blessed is the man to whom um, uh, Yehovah imputeth not iniquity. Psalm 32 is quoted in Romans 4 8 by Paul. Now we're done with Jesus. Now we come to Paul, right? And uh, in Romans 9 29, again, Paul says, as Isaiah, Isaiah said before, except the Lord of Sabaoth had left us a seed, we had been as Sodoma and we had been like unto Gomorrah. Who is the Lord of Sabaoth? Is Yehovah Sabaoth? is there in the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 9. That is what is quoted by Paul. Marcion and his followers should be ashamed of saying that Paul taught that uh, the father of the Lord Jesus Christ is somebody else eh? and not Yehovah. What a lie, what a, what a despicable lie this is. And I'll tell you there are plenty of fellows who have a lot of following, a lot of followers, a lot of subscribers on the YouTube putting out this lie and I want you in case if you just come across any of that nonsense and rubbish show these verses to them I've shown you so far um, you know four of them or five of them so this is the, this is the first one here right the first commandment next love the Lord thy God and then we have the Lord said unto my Lord and then Yehovah in Romans Yehovah in Romans right about five of them now now this is the list you may want to you know pause the video take a screenshot go through all these references in every reference if you go back to the old testament take a reference bible go to this new testament verses find the old testament uh, reference for it you will find Yehovah in the old testament reference which is being quoted in the new testament with his name being translated as the lord okay so we have 54 uh, and so it is beyond question the divine name is mentioned in the new testament now divine name was given to yeshua or jesus what do you mean by given to yeshua so let's read philippians chapter 2 verse 9 to 11 we read there wherefore god also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow and of things in heaven and of things in earth and things under the earth uh, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ or Yeshua Christ is the Lord Yeshua Mashiach Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father okay so the phrase that we used at the beginning of this video the title of this video is the name above all names uh, is taken from this particular scripture in Philippians. God has highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name. In fact, if you read from verse 5 onwards, Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, thought it not a thing to be grasped to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, being found in fashion as a man, humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Wherefore, you see, because he humbled and went so low, and even was prepared to bear that punishment on the cross for the sins of others, uh, for no wrong of his own, uh, to glorify God, and he died on the cross. Wherefore, God has now highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus. Okay, so this phrase, the name of Jesus, means the, the name which is given to him. This name, Jesus, is the name of the human. 
right? The man. But the real person inside uh, is given, uh, the Jesus is given an, a, a name, a, di a divine name. And that name we're talking about, the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in earth. Why am I saying that? What is this name of Jesus? I say the name of Jesus is Yodhe Vavhe, Yehova. What do you mean? Somebody can ask me, well, the name of Jesus is Jesus. Well, you know what? This phrase, every knee should bow, every tongue should confess, comes from the uh, Old Testament. We will, we, will, we will look at that. It comes from Isaiah 45. I have verses showing. I'm going to show those verses on the screen shortly. Uh, but let us just move ahead uh, and talk about the name given to Yeshua. Okay. He himself says in John chapter 17 to the Father in his prayer, he prays to the Father. I am no longer in this world, but they are in the world. I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name which you have given me. There are other translations, especially King James Bible, for example, it says, Holy Father, keep them in your name, whom you have given me, instead of say, which. So this which refers to the name, here also which refers to the name, whereas whom refers to the people. Now, this is because of the difference in the Greek text, so the one above is Textus Receptus and this pronoun here, highlighted pronoun in both these locations in verse 11 and 12 is different in the Nezel Allen text, in the critical text. And this actually refers to the name and that refers to the people. So anyway, we have a location, well, a translation where it actually says that based on an alternative Greek text. Further, uh, not only that, in fact, um, there, there are many more verses. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 1, Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. It, this verse says that he, that is Jesus, has obtained a more excellent name than they. Who are they? They are the angels. You can read it ab about them in, in, in the context. He obtained a more excellent name. Which name? It, it is Yodhe Vavhe. He obtained through inheritance. How did he inherit it? Because he is a son. So he got from father to son. Like for example, my son gets my surname. Uh, so um, Donald Trump's uh, son's name is Donald Trump Jr. And so even it is written in the book of um, say first Enoch or maybe third Enoch. Uh, somebody was sitting up in the heaven at the right hand of God and he was called the lesser Yahweh or lesser Yehovah, meaning second in command. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. The son inherits the name of the father and the name of the father is Yodhe Vauhe. And the son also gets the same name, Yodhe Vauhe. Okay? Right. So, Divine, uh, not only, now the, the, another topic that I want to show is that the divine name was possessed by others in the Hebrew Bible. Okay, you may ask, well, this is all the New Testament. Well, all these New Testament verses you're showing me, but your channel is about the Hebrew Bible, isn't it? Where in the Hebrew Bible uh, can the divine name be given to somebody else? Uh, can it be given? Well, without going to the New Testament, as I, as I said, uh, Second Temple Jewish literature, First Enoch, Third Enoch, does prove the fact that the divine name is attributed uh, to others beside God because they possess godly character, in fact, are equated with God. Okay, uh, They are equated with God and therefore they receive the name. Now, in the, uh, in the um, Tanakh or the Hebrew Bible, we read in Genesis chapter 19 verse 24, then Yehovah rained upon Sodom and upon Gomorrah brimstone and fire from Yehovah out of heaven. There is one down below called Yehovah. And he rains brimstone and fire from Yehovah in heaven. And who is this Yehovah upon earth? You need to read the previous chapter, Genesis chapter 8. He, Yehovah on earth, comes in the form of a man to Abraham's house along with two angels. 
and he speaks to him. Abraham bows down and uh, uh, pays his respect and he receives Abraham's uh, hospitality, eats his food uh, given to him in the form of a man and he's called Yehovah and the Lord, the yudh and he speaks with Abraham and while he's speaking with Abraham, those remaining two angels, they go to Sodom and Gomorrah, they, met, they meet with Lot and have that conversation and later on, Yehovah comes to Sodom and Gomorrah and rains fire and brimstone upon it from Yehovah out of heaven. How many of them are there? Two of them? There's only one. So the one in the heaven cannot be seen. And the one here down below is his manifestation. Even if you see him above, like as in the book of Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah saw the Lord sitting on the throne. Uh, he sees this one who is enthroned. And so the one who is transcendent can never be seen. The one who has manifested himself or shown himself is the one who appears in the human form. He always appears in the human form. He is anthropomorphic. You can read it in right throughout in the book of Genesis. He walks in the garden in the cool of the day, etc. and speaks to Adam. He forms things with his hands, uh, all that stuff. This is the manifest Jehovah in, in the form of a human uh, who is a manifestation or an, an emanation from the transcendent. Okay. In the book of Exodus 23, we read the Lord saying, Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Prepared, He says, Beware of him, obey his voice, provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Malach. Malach is the angel. Malach means it's like a projection. Like, for example, if somebody is reading BBC News in the BBC studio, that's the real person. But the person we watch on the TV screen is a projection. That's the angel. That's what an angel is. But of course, uh, if I start taking a video of my TV screen and you are watching, say, a live video on WhatsApp or something like that as I take a, a video of my TV screen, then you have a second degree, uh, a lower level appearance. So from the studio, the real person sitting and then you have a, a, on the screen and then so I'm just giving an example. So Angel Malach is a, like a, people may translate as a messenger, uh, but really what he is, is, is an emanation or uh, his projection, you can say, uh, and appears like a separate individual. And they can take their own, uh, their own separate hypostasis. You can say the hypostasis of God. Uh, and they have the, the name of the Lord. There is one uh, who has the name of the Lord, this angel, angel in the capital in the King James Bible. Kishmi Bekirbo <coughs> means my name is in him. Also, uh, the, the name of God is attributed to the branch. Here we read in Jeremiah 23, Behold, the days come, saith Yehovah, that I will raise up unto David a righteous branch. This is the Messiah. Every Jew will agree. Rabbi will agree. And the king shall reign and prosper and shall execute judgment and justice on the earth. In his days, Judah shall be saved and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called Yehovah Tzidkenu the Lord our righteousness, his name, masculine, okay? Here we read Tzemach, Tzemach is the branch. And he says, Vezeshmo, his name in the masculine, Adonai Tzidkenu, Yehovah Tzidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. The same Jeremiah in chapter 33 almost repeats the same thing but with a slightly different content. I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. This is again the Messiah. And in those days Judah shall be saved and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she, that is Jerusalem, shall be called is Yehovah Zidkenu. Vezeh asher yikra lah. Lah is the, um, to her, to her. She shall be called, <coughs> is what we see. This she is coming from here. Yehovah Tzidkenu, the Lord our righteousness. Who will be called? Who will be given that name? 
Jerusalem. That is why Paul calls this is the heavenly Jerusalem, the mother of us all in Galatians chapter 4. Right, now another verse in the book of Revelation chapter 3 verse 12. Him that overcometh I will make a pillar in the temple of my God and he shall go out no more and I will write upon him the name of my God. Closely observe this, the name of my God, number one. In the name of the city of my God, that's the Jerusalem. Jerusalem will be called Yehovah Tzidkenu. Okay, so in the name, the Yehovah is contained in the name. The name of my God, the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven. That's a heavenly Jerusalem from my God. And I will write upon him my new name. Jesus is saying, all of this is said by Jesus. What is it? My new name. Wherefore, God also hath highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name. My new name. Okay. Also, in the book of Psalms 118, we read, Blessed be he that cometh in the name of Yehovah. We have blessed you out of the house of Yehovah. Somebody comes bearing the name having the name within himself. You see, the Lord has placed, when there was a temple, and temp in the temple when there was glory of God, Kavod Adonai, Kavod Adonai, the glory of God, he put his name in the temple, right? And that shows that his presence is there. In a similar way, name is present within him. Uh, he cometh in the name of the Lord. Baruch haba b'shem Adonai, he that cometh in the name of the blessed be he cometh in the name of the Lord. Now this verse, this Psalm 118 verse is quoted in Mark chapter 11. Uh, also Matthew 23. During the procession when they shouted Hosanna, uh, you know, that, that uh, triumphal entry as they call it, um, uh, the Palm Sunday. And they went before uh, and they that followed Christ saying Hosanna, Hoshiana. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Now this Lord is, of course, this Lord is Yehovah. That's the quotation from the Old Testament. For I say unto you, you shall not see me henceforth till you shall say, Blessed is he that cometh in the name of Yehovah. Matthew 23. Okay, so the name is ascribed and given, inherited, etc. by Jesus. And so we come back to Philippians again and we talk about the name above all names. This name is given to him and at the name of Jesus, every knee should, uh, should bow of, every, of things in heaven, things on earth and things under the earth, that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And that means you confess Jesus Christ is Yehovah to the glory of God the Father. That is the intent of God. Okay, why? What do you mean by the name of Jesus? How can anybody bow their knee and uh, confess their tongue, the name of Jesus? Is, there, is this being confessed to J-E-S-U-S -S, or is this confessed to Yehovah? That's the point. Okay, Paul not only says this in Philippians, he also says the same thing in Romans chapter 14. We read, for it is, as it is written, I, I, as I live, saith the Lord, this Lord is Yodhe every knee shall bow to me and every tongue shall confess to God. Where is it written? Well, it is written in Isaiah chapter 45. The Lord says, I have sworn by myself, the word is gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return that unto me every knee shall bow every tongue shall swear. If you read the previous verse in the previous section, you can clearly see that uh, the context is that Lord Yehovah is speaking. He says, look unto me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. And he says, I have sworn by myself unto me. What do you mean by me? He said previously, Yehovah. Is speaking unto me every knee shall bow every tongue shall swear so how can Paul bring that and apply to name of Jesus unless the name of Jesus is referring to the name which is given to him 
the name which is above every name and that name is Yehovah therefore every tongue is supposed to confess that Jesus Christ is Yehovah to the glory of God the Father right <clears throat> let's uh, let's move on right there in the, you see a couple of places again the name of the Savior no? Jesus is the Savior but if you go to the Old Testament right in, in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 he says I even I am Yehovah and beside me there is no Savior and thou shalt know that I Yehovah am thy Savior and thy Redeemer the mighty one of Jacob and so unless Jesus is Yehovah incarnate coming in the flesh just as he came to Abraham in the form and the physical form with other two guys they came just like people and Abraham tells them, oh, you've come in the sun, you know, wash your feet and sit under the tree and take rest a little bit while I prepare food. And he makes food and uh, he roasts uh, uh, a lamb or a calf uh, and uh, he gets the bread and he gets some cheese, or a butter, uh, um, cream cheese or butter and then curds or something. And he gives them and they eat, including the Lord, Yehovah. And then he goes to Sodom and Gomorrah and rains fire and brimstone from Yehovah up in the heavens. You see, it's all there in the, uh, in the Old Testament, in Genesis. And that is whom we are referring to. So then <clears throat> we read in the book of Acts, people there are, there are, there are, I've seen, I've come across a lot of Christians who read verses like this. For example, in Acts chapter 4 uh, and they are prepared to give up the name of Yehovah and they say, well, the name that saves you is Jesus. Well, it is, but we will we'll, we'll come to that. But if you, if, you, if you read these verses, let's say, uh, let's read Acts 4, 10 and 12. Be it known unto you all, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised up from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Who is this guy? Peter and John were walking to the temple in Acts chapter 3. They were walking to the temple in Jerusalem to worship at about 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the, in the evening sacrifice time. And they saw one guy uh, who was lame. He was lame from birth, I think. He was, he was lame and he was sitting and begging at the temple gate. And they healed him. They said, in the name of Jesus Christ, rise up and walk. And he got up and walked, he started jumping and he went into the temple to worship. And later on, the authorities caught them and they said, uh, what happened and all that? And therefore, these people got an opportunity to witness what they've done. And they're telling the authorities, including the Jewish authorities, they said, be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, God, whom God has raised from the dead, even by him doth this man stand here before you whole. Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby you must be saved. Think about this. They are basically telling a bunch of Jews, a Jewish authorities who know the Tanakh, who know the Hebrew Bible, where the Lord himself says, I am Yehovah, beside me there is no savior, I am thy savior, O Jacob, etc. And to those very people, these guys go and say, hey, let all the people of Israel know that there is no salvation in any other, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And then they say the name by which we get saved is Jesus. If they say that, it is easy for them to refute. They'll say, Hoy, just go and go to the book of Isaiah and read. So what are they saying? What does this all mean? It basically, I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to conclude in the end, but what I'm trying to suggest is that when they say the name of Jesus, they are using this phrase as a proxy for the name of Yehovah. The name of Jesus, that is the name which he received by inheritance and also after his suffering, after his exaltation. In all these cases, he received a name and that name is Yodhevavhe. By that name, uh, and most likely that in those days, they were not allowed to 
utter the name, say the name and heal by the name, etc. It looks like I think the Romans as well as the Jewish authorities had put a ban on the name. And therefore, the New Testament, the writers of the New Testament also, probably during that time, they were using the name of Jesus as a proxy for the name of Jehovah because he received the name. So you're not, you can, it's, you can't use any other name as a proxy because it doesn't work like that. But his name works as a proxy because he received the divine name. Therefore, there is no other salvation in any other name. Salvation cannot be any other name because Yehovah is the Savior. And Jesus Christ is the Savior because he has the divine name. Now, <clears throat> a couple of extra biblical sources. In one Enoch, as I said, you, let's read this. At that hour, the Son of Man was named by the name. By the name, by the name means the divine name, Yodheva, in the presence of the Lord of the Spirits, the before time. Even before the creation of the sun and the moon, before the creation of the stars, he, the Son of Man, was named by the name in the presence of the Lord of the Spirits. So essentially what one Enoch is saying is, the Son of Man was given or named by the divine name before the creation. Also, Philo says, but if Philo was a uh, Alexandrian Jew, a uh, very Jewish philosopher, he wrote a lot of excellent stuff, in fact, some of which matches with Paul's doctrine as well, as also John's, uh, in fact, the doctrine of Logos, for example. But if there be any as yet unfit to be called a son of God, if there is any person who cannot call himself a child of God, a son of God, because uh, of his weakness, uh, moral weakness, let him press to take his place under God's firstborn, the word, Hologos, who holds the eldership among the angels, an archangel as it were, and many names are his, for he is called the beginning, the name of God. He is called the name of God. So essentially what he's saying is the son of God, God's firstborn, is called the name of God, the word of God, etc. Right, so we've seen the divine name was given to Yeshua. Now, importance of the divine name in the New Testament. You see, the whole of Christianity, Christianity or Christian doctrine is rooted in the name. Because one must believe in the name to get saved. If you're a Christian, you say, did you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ? Well, yes, believe on the name. 1 John chapter 1, verse 10, As many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God or children of God even to them that believe on his name, on the name of the Son of God. Okay. Also in Acts chapter 10 verse 43, we read, To him give all the prophets witness, that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. So the name is important in the believing. Also, uh, we read a couple of more verses. Now let's go back to the Old Testament now. Forget about the New Testament. What does the Old Testament or the Tanakh, the Hebrew Bible say uh, about believing in the name? Psalm 9, 10 verse 10 says, And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, Yehovah, hast not forsaken them that seek thee. So there are people who know his name. They put trust in him. So here's the connection between the name and putting the trust or believing. Also in Zephaniah, I will also leave in the midst of thee an afflicted and poor people and they shall trust in the name of Yehovah. These are uh, the remnant of Israel. They will trust in the name of Yehovah. So it's very clear that trusting in the name here is actually linked to the name of Yehovah. Whereas in the New Testament is the name of the Son of God. So which name is it? It's quite obvious. Let's move on. Baptism in the New Testament is linked to the divine name. Go ye therefore and disciple all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Matthew 28 verse 9. Now it says the name of and of the Son and of. The name is only one. You know, again, we read a verse in the book of Revelation earlier where the Lord Jesus says, that I will write upon him 
the name of my God, the name of the city of my God and my new name. Now you match up those three with these three here in 28. You will find the name of my God is the name of the Father. The my new name is the name of the Son. The name of the city of God is the name of the Holy Ghost. Uh, Paul says the city of God is Jerusalem, which is above is the mother of us all. So we have father, mother, son here in Matthew 28 and in the book of Revelation. Right. <clears throat> Baptism and the divine name. Again, in Acts 22, uh, Hananias uh, says to Paul, uh, Why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. So uh, while baptizing, while being baptized, he calls upon the name of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord refers to calling upon the name of Yudhe. Wow, hey. Okay. Not only uh, getting saved and getting baptized, believing and baptized, and but also gathering. All Christian gatherings are supposed to be in the name. Wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Whether it is in my name or to my name or whatever, let's focus on my name, which is that name. He is basically talking about the name that he has inherited from God. He's not talking about his earthly name. Jesus is the name which identifies the man Jesus on the earth from Peter and John and others. But there are a lot of other people who had the name Jesus. For example, Barabbas had the name Jesus. His name was Jesus Barabbas or Yeshua Barabbas. There were a lot of other people who were Yeshua. Joshua, the son of Nun, was Yeshua. Um, we have Bar Jesus in the book of Acts. Uh, we also have another Jesus Justice or somebody. So there are lots of Jesus or Yeshua in the first century. That's not the name that is referred to. Okay, The name that he, the internal person possesses is what, is what we are talking about here. Again, gathering in the name is, uh, is mentioned by Paul in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ when you are gathered together, etc. Also, the miracles are done by the my divine name. Peter and John, I told you earlier about that incident when they raised up a, uh, you know, a, a lame man. They said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. So this name of Jesus Christ is, I'm suggesting to you, is the divine name Yodhe Vauhe. Okay, so that come, brings us to the end uh, 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 about the calling upon the name of the Lord. Why? Because it is one of the things that Hananiah mentioned, Ananias or Hananiah mentioned to Paul saying that, why, why do you tarry? Why are you delaying? Get up and wash away your sins. Be baptized and wash away your sins by calling upon the name of the Lord. Calling upon the name of the Lord is directly linked to salvation. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised, so shall I be saved from mine enemies. Psalm 18.3 If anybody claims to be saved, if you are a Christian and you claim to be saved, then you must be very clear about what are you saved from and who are your enemies. Right, so again, in the book of Joel, uh, chapter 2, verse 32, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of Yehovah shall be delivered. And this verse, mind you, this verse, Joel 2, is quoted in the New Testament several times, including in the first presentation of the gospel by Peter on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. And he says, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So the delivered is making it as saved. It's one and the same. It's the same exact verse he quotes from Joel 2. That calling on the name of the Lord is the calling on the name of Yehovah. There is no confusion whatsoever. Now, again, in Acts 9, 14, we read, and he had the authority. Well, these people are meant, you know, Ananias, actually. Uh, the Lord appeared to Ananias and says, you go uh, go to Saul, uh, that is Paul, uh, and talk to him and baptize him, etc., whatever he said. In that occasion, Ananias replies to the Lord, Lord, this man has been persecuting a lot of Christians. Uh, uh, and in that occasion, he says, and here he hath authority from the chief priests to bind 
all that call on thy name. So all who called on his name. So we, we see this one here. Also calling on the name of the Lord. That's what Hananiah said in Acts chapter 22. And again, again in Acts chapter 9 verse 20, we read Paul, once Paul was baptized, he, he started preaching Christ in the synagogue, saying that he is the son of God. Christ is the son of God, which is clear from Psalm 2. Uh, because uh, the, why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? People have raised up against the Lord, against Yehovah, and he's anointed. That's the Christ. And in the end, uh, we read, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And that's the son of God. He's preached Christ in the synagogues that he is the son of God. But all that heard him were amazed and said, Is not this that destroyed them which which called on this name in Jerusalem. Now, what name did they call? It, it's perhaps that the name of God calling Yehovah was banned, and therefore they were not calling upon. And secondly, they might be using the name of Jesus as a proxy for the name of Yehovah, and therefore calling upon the name of Jesus was calling upon the name of Yehovah. So that could be another reason. But in any case, calling upon this name is a reference to the Old Testament uh, reference of calling upon the name of Yehovah. Also in the book of Romans, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord, this Lord is Yehovah. Basically, he's telling you to confess Yeshua is Yehovah. Right? And shall believe in your heart, God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It's very clear here because whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, that comes from Joel chapter 2. And there the name is Yehovah. And therefore, when he says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth, Jesus is Lord, and this Lord is here below and there, he is referring to the same thing. Now, again, in 1 Corinthians 1 2, we have a call up all those who call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Okay. Right, so all these are references. So the point I'm trying to make is that the name of Jesus was used as a proxy for the divine name Yehovah. How could you use it? I can think of a few. Uh, possibilities. Now let us consider the name, the pronunciation Yeho and Yahu. If you consider the last letter He as a silent, as in uh, it's as a vowel rather than a consonant, then you can only, you can pronounce this as Yeho or Yahu or Yehu. Whatever way you can say, actually there's a guy called Yehu in the uh, in the Old Testament, a king uh, who killed Ahab's wife Jezebel. And his spelling is Yod He Vav Aleph. Aleph is again silent or it's like a vowel. And so if you treat He like a vowel, it will be Yehu or Yeho or Yahu. Okay? Now, take since they, they also match with the theophoric names, now take this name, the Yod He Vav. This Yudhe Vav is also important because it's, you could treat it as a trigrammaton rather than the tetragrammaton because it occurs in many old documents. For example, in the Septuagint, um, in the Dead Sea Scroll manuscript of, of the Septuagint, Yao, um, Iota, Alpha, Omega occurs. You can pronounce as Yeho. It's basically an approximation of Yeho in Greek. Also, there was a temple constructed to Yeho, that is Yahweh or Yehovah, in Elephantine in Egypt. After the Babylonian captivity, some people went into Egypt and they constructed a temple. Of course, whether it is right or not is a different question, but they made a temple and they dedicated it to Yeho. And it is present, there are a lot of papyri documents found there and in those documents this name Yeho occurs multiple times. Also there's one guy here Diodorus Siculus he wrote in the first century BC say, who said among the Jews Moses referred to his loss to the God who is invoked as Yaho. It's the same Greek here 
uh, as in the first case. And finally, this uh, Yeho or Yahu occurs in Mount Abal curse tablet, which was actually uh, released. Uh, the information about it is released last year, uh, somewhere around May or something. And it, it turned out that its dating is about 1400 to 1200 BC. Uh, it, it is a curse tablet. Somebody has written it on a silver foil or something like that. Uh, and the divine name Yeho is found on it uh, in the proto alphabetic script. And this is how it looks. Okay. So, how can Yeho possibly could, can, can Yeho be possibly, uh, uh, could be taken, uh, uh, used, um, well, meant, well, so let me rephrase. Can Yeshu or Yeshu, Yeshu be used as a proxy for Yahoo? Uh, Yud -he Vav and Yud Shin Vav. This is what I'm suggesting. Perhaps, I cannot say this is just a theory. I think that when they are saying the name of Jesus, by the name of Jesus you can be saved, you could, they are using this name because they are not allowed to use this name. And so they are saying it. And when they say this, they mean this. But they could also, you, you might argue, they could probably take some other name and use it and mean the divine name. But not quite. Unless there must be some sort of a strong relationship between these two names. And I think there is a relationship where the letter, the letter Yod and Shin, Yesh, Yesh means existence. And Haya means to be. So being and existence are essentially the same. And so perhaps you could derive uh, the same meaning of Yeho from Yeshu. Not the regular meaning. Yeshua means uh, either it means he will save or it could also mean he is saved. In any case, we are not talking about salvation. We are saying, we are interpreting it differently with a particle called Yesh in Hebrew, ye Yud and Shin. And from Yesh, we could equate the meaning of this to this okay now the how can you also there's another way that we could think of is by converting the letter he to shin how can it how can you replace the letter he to shin uh, you could perhaps do that because in some languages uh, it has uh, happened for example uh, avestan zend um, zend is the uh, language or the avestan is zoroastrian language uh, is very close to sanskrit i mean they are almost mutually intelligible languages uh, and there ahura becomes asura homa becomes soma dahyu becomes dasyu hapta becomes sapta hindu becomes sindhu okay the common thing that you can notice in all these cases is the h sound is turned into s sound in sanskrit and so this is exactly what happened here. H sound turned into shin sound, sir or sh sound. Perhaps something of that sort, maybe the Lord Jesus Christ taught them like this, some esoteric connection between his modified name and the name of God itself. Uh, and therefore the four letter name Yeho, if you pronounce Yeho, but the four letter name, you can pronounce it Yeshu. And why they said Yeshu is because the last letter Ain, I have not shown Ain here. The actual spelling is Yodashin Vav Ain. Ain was not pronounced in the northern Israel in those times in, the, in Galilee. Therefore, you could replace Ain with He or you could replace the letter altogether and pronounce, it is pronounced the same. And that is perhaps how they may have done it. Uh, you know, we can't tell. But going by the references and their going by the New Testament references and comparing them with the cross references in the Old Testament, there is no doubt whatsoever that the name of Jesus, when they say the name of Jesus, that refers to the divine name Yodhe Vauhe. So when they use the name of Yeshua, they meant Yehovah. That is how they taught salvation. That is how they heal. That brings us to the conclusion of this video. Thank you very much. And uh, I will see you in the next video. Thank you.